humans. You ask them to help, and you invite chaos. The words of caution echoed in Rylak's mind as he prepared for the call. The Council of Elders had debated for weeks, uncertain whether it was worth bringing them into the fold. But with the Corlax Empire's fleet advancing, it had become clear that the time for debate had long passed. Rylak stood in the holographic chamber, gazing at the projection of the human representative. General Lorne's figure flickered, arms crossed, eyes sharp with attention. Humans were known for their directness. They wasted no time on pleasantries. You need our help, Lorne's voice broke the silence. There was no question in his tone, only certainty, and fast. The Corlax had taken three of the outer colonies, and their fleet was cutting through space like a scythe. Rylak, a diplomat of his kind, was not accustomed to dealing with humans. The calm, methodical decisions his species revered were not something humans valued in the heat of battle. Our defenses are failing, Rylak admitted, voice strained. Our technology isn't enough. We need... Tech ain't the problem, Lorne interrupted, stepping forward. You're fighting a war the way you've always fought. The Corlax, they're a problem you've never seen before. There was silence. Rylak shifted uncomfortably, watching the human's hardened gaze. Their unpredictability unsettled him. But at this point, the Uvalans had no choice. We're not like you, Lorne continued. When we fight, we don't just aim to win. We aim to crush. Rylak's species had no concept of such an approach. War, for them, was defensive. To survive, not dominate. But now, they faced annihilation. The Council had sent Rylak to find an answer, and standing before him was humanity's brutal efficiency. He could feel the weight of the decision in his throat. Will you help us? Rylak asked, the words escaping before he could think of a more diplomatic phrasing. Lawrence smiled faintly, but it wasn't one of warmth. We will accept, Rylak nodded, hands shaking slightly. The alternative was extinction. Lawrence's eyes hardened again. Then prep your people. We land in 48 hours. The transmission cut leaving Rylak alone with the faint hum of the holographic equipment. In two days, the Uvalan homeworld would see what it meant to fight alongside humans. It was too late to turn back now. The Corlax invasion continued without pause. Their vessels, sleek and dark, hovered above the Uvalan cities, raining down fire upon helpless civilians. Rylak's heart pounded with every explosion, every distant scream. He stood atop a fortified building, watching helplessly as his people fled into the underground shelters. He glanced at the horizon, where the human fleet was set to arrive. Would they come in time? Suddenly, the sky ripped open. Streaks of metal tore through the atmosphere, descending with terrifying speed. Rylek's eyes widened as human drop pods slammed into the ground, kicking up clouds of dust. The Corlax turned their attention immediately, adjusting their fire toward the new arrivals. But before they could react fully, the first wave of human soldiers emerged. They're here, Rylak whispered, his voice trembling. The humans didn't hesitate. Within moments, their infantry was on the move, weapons flashing in controlled bursts. They advanced, not like defenders, but like predators, Moving with ruthless efficiency, the Corlax caught off guard, scrambled to regroup. Rylak watched in disbelief. The humans were not just fighting. Open a channel to General Lorne, he ordered to his comm officer. The young Uvalin complied, and within seconds, Lorne's face appeared on Rylak's wrist pad. We're on the ground. Your people stay out of our way, Lorne said flatly. But. You hired us to win, Lorne interrupted. That's what we do. Rylak could only nod. The battle had begun, and the humans were already claiming the field. The battlefield had transformed in mere hours. The Corlax, so accustomed to methodical advances, 
found themselves facing an enemy unlike any they had encountered. Human tactics were a chaotic symphony. Shifting, adapting, and striking at random points with brutal efficiency. What had begun as an organized invasion quickly dissolved into confusion for the Corlax. In the command center, Rylak monitored the unfolding chaos. He could see the human squads through surveillance drones, their movements unpredictable yet effective. They moved in tight groups, communicating in short, rapid bursts over comms. Move! Delta team! Flank right! One human yelled through the feed. Rylak marveled at the stark difference between the humans and his own people. His species operated like a machine, each part in its place, each action calculated. The humans were something else entirely. The humans were something else entirely. Provisational, reactive, driven by instincts that seemed alien to the Uvalans. General Lorne, Rylak called through the channel. How are you? We're winning. Lorne interrupted, his voice calm despite the chaos around him. Corlax don't know how to handle unpredictability. We thrive in it. A dull rumble shook the ground beneath the command center. Rylax's gaze flickered to the tactical screen. Another Corlax assault wave. This one larger, more determined. But even as they approached, the human forces adapted splitting into smaller units, weaving between the debris and smoke, disappearing and reappearing in unexpected places. They're trying to overwhelm us, Rylak muttered to himself. They won't, Lorne replied. Let them come. Rylak watched as the humans sprang into action. Korlak's forces converged on their position, but instead of holding the line, the humans retreated just enough to lure them deeper into the ruins of the city. The Corlax, eager for a quick victory, followed. And that was when the humans struck. Explosions erupted from hidden traps, catching the Corlax off. Guard. From the shadows, human soldiers appeared, cutting through the alien forces with a mix of precise fire and sheer brutality. It was a massacre. They don't fight like us, Rylak whispered, half in awe, half in fear. Lauren's voice came through the comms again. They fight how they've been taught, how they've always fought. But we're not like the others. We don't play by their rules. Rylak watched in silence as the Corlax began to retreat, their once unstoppable advance faltering under the human assault. They're falling back, Rylak noted, though he could scarcely believe it. Moments ago, the Corlax had seemed unstoppable. Now they were in full retreat. Of course they are, Lorne said. We gave them a taste. The Corlax had retreated, but the humans weren't done. From the command center, Rylak watched the tactical display as human forces pressed their advantage. They didn't let up, pushing forward with a speed and ferocity that unnerved even him. The Corlax, known for their ruthlessness and discipline, were now fleeing from an enemy that fought as if every moment of battle was their last. Are they pursuing? Rylak asked aloud, his voice tinged with disbelief. They're chasing them down, Lorne confirmed. Your war is over when the enemy's gone. Ours ends when they can't come back. Rylak could barely comprehend it. His people had never sought total destruction. They fought only to survive, to defend their homes. But the humans, these unpredictable allies, were taking the fight to the Corlax, even as they tried to escape. On the battlefield, explosions lit the sky. Human artillery pounded the Corlax positions, while infantry squads moved cutting down any stragglers. Drones hovered overhead, marking targets with brutal efficiency, coordinating the assault with deadly synchronization. Is this necessary? Rylak finally asked unable to tear his eyes away from the carnage. Lorne's voice was distant, almost detached. The Corlax aren't the type to leave quietly. If we don't crush them now, they'll regroup, come back stronger. That's what you called us for, 
to end that. Rylick's stomach turned at the realization. They hadn't hired the humans to simply protect their world. They had invited them to finish a war in a way that Uvalans never could. On the ground, the battle had devolved into a hunt. Every corner of the battlefield was searched. No enemy left to regroup. As the last of the Corlax forces tried to flee back to their ships, they were cut down, their advanced technology no match for the raw aggression and unorthodox tactics of the human soldiers. Target down, one soldier muttered through the comms as he fired a final round into a Corlax officer, ending any hope of a counterattack. Another human voice crackled over the radio. Clear here. Let's move to extraction. The mission was over. Hours later, Rylek stood before the ruins of what had once been a Corlex forward base. Now, it was nothing more than scorched earth and twisted metal. His people were safe, their world saved from destruction, but at what cost? He glanced over at the human soldiers, many of whom were now packing up their equipment, ready to depart as quickly as they had arrived. General Lorne approached, his face as impassive as ever. Your world's safe, he said, his tone devoid of any triumph. For now, Rylek echoed, his voice trembling with uncertainty. The humans had done what they had promised, but there was something unsettling in Lorne's words. The Corlax aren't like your people. They won't forget this, and neither will we, Lorne said eyes narrowing slightly. You hired us to win, and we did. But understand this. The galaxy doesn't care about fairness or peace. It cares about who survives. Rylak swallowed, trying to digest the cold truth of it all. His species had spent centuries avoiding conflict, seeking harmony in a galaxy that now seemed far more dangerous than he had ever known. The humans had shown him a different way, one that he wasn't sure his people were ready for. Thank you, Rylak said, though the words felt hollow in his throat. You've saved us. Lorne nodded, but there was no gratitude in his eyes, no acknowledgement of the Uvalans' thanks. We were hired to fight. Now we're paid, and we move on. Keep your defenses up. You won't want to call us twice. Without another word, Lorne turned and walked away leaving Rylak standing in the wreckage of the battle they had fought together. As the human ships lifted off, leaving the planet's surface, Rylak stood with the Council of Elders who had gathered to witness the aftermath. The sky above them cleared, no longer filled with the burning trails of Korlax ships or the streaking fire of battle. They were efficient, one of the Elders remarked, their voice barely above a whisper. They were brutal, another corrected their eyes filled with a mix of awe and fear. Rylik remained silent. The humans had been more than either of those things. They were survivors, capable of doing whatever was necessary to ensure that they walked away from any conflict alive, victorious. But now that the Corlax had been defeated, Rylak couldn't shake the uneasy feeling that the price of their salvation was far greater than he'd anticipated. He turned to look at the sky, where the last human ships disappeared into the stars. The Uvalans had survived the Corlax invasion. But in doing so, they had learned a bitter truth about the galaxy. Peace, as they had known it, was a fragile illusion, and in this vast, hostile universe, there was only one guarantee. Those who fought like humans survived. For better or for worse. Rylak clenched his fists, determination swelling inside him. The Uvalans would have to change. They could no longer remain the passive, peaceful people they once were. The galaxy demanded strength, and now, having seen what humanity was capable of, Rylak knew that his people would need to evolve if they were to survive the threats that lay ahead. The lesson was clear. Victory belonged to those willing to fight for it.